When a team is eliminated in the playoffs, you can almost be assured that Bobby Marks of ESPN will drop his offseason guide for the team that was eliminated. And I love watching those videos, even when it's the New York Knicks. And the Knicks were just recently eliminated from the playoffs. So he definitely created his New York Knicks version of the offseason guide. And normally, I watch that video and then I'll do a breakdown. But this time around, I want to try something different. I haven't watched the video yet. I want to actually live watch that video with you guys and break it down as we watch it together. We're going to do that and so much more today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now and make sure you have notifications turned on so you don't miss a second of the new content. And now, let's get started. Bobby Marks off-season guide. Now, I respect Bobby Marks. I respect his opinion. He knows a lot about the NBA. He's a former GM. He's a current ESPN NBA insider. He has a lot of inside knowledge. So anytime he's speaking about the Knicks or any team for that matter, I am locked in. I am listening. And I want to hear each and every word he has to say. And this time, it's no different. So without further ado, we're going to roll the video to watch what Bobby Marks has to say about the Knicks and their off-season guide. Roll it. All right, a happy Sunday. Hopefully everyone is doing great. Uh, we are doing part two of a New York Knicks video. I love it. When Let's go. 15 minutes doing a video and it doesn't come out. <laughs> if anybody uh, has any ideas on how we can do these videos better. Oh, Mark, you do a good job, man. Know, you do a great job, Bobby. My patience of using photos <laughs> on my neck. It's a waste of time. But on to the New York Knicks. Yes, yes, yes. What do you say? Great what season. What do you say about the New York Knicks? Th Magical these season. And the article uh, that I wrote Friday night after my son graduated from high school. Gotta love that. And uh, Saturday morning are the toughest ones to write, uh, especially for a team that's been basically fighting uphill since the Philadelphia series. Listen, toughness, heart, determination. Eventually, there's a dead end to it. And I know you could say New York was up 3-2, but this roster was a mash unit, right? When you look at the disappointment, and there is disappointment in losing in Game 7, there's a disappointment yep. in losing in Game 6, especially yeah. when you have game clinching to go to an Eastern Conference Finals. Let's just stop it right there, because I do want to mention that real quick. He's not wrong about that. There's some fans who are telling me, oh, there's no right to be disappointed right now. We can't be disappointed right now. We have so many things to look forward to in the future. I can understand that. And honestly, for me, I am looking forward to the future. I'm very positive about that. But I can understand people who are upset and disappointed with the loss. We were this close to getting to the Eastern Conference Finals. I thought that if we had a little bit of a healthier team, maybe we had a fully healthy Josh Hart, we could have went all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. But then what would we have done? We would have been missing a number of players and potentially missing Jalen Brunson. We were likely not going to win that series anyways, but it would have been a great story for the Knicks to get there, hobbled as they were, dealing with all the injuries. So shout out to Bobby Marks for actually mentioning that because a lot of people, they failed to do so. There is also the disappointment of the great unknown. What mm -hmm. if this roster was healthy? Would they be playing Boston right now? Would they be going yes. to the NBA Finals? Yes. Uh, when you look at... Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, Boyan Bogdanovic, Mitchell Robinson again, OG Ananobi, OG Ananobi again, uh, Josh Hart in Game 6, Jalen Brunson breaking his hand in Game 7. The list goes on and on and on. We will never know what this Knicks team would look like. We got a sample. But we, got a, we got a sample. 26 and 5 in the games Ananobi played postseason and regular season. We saw the sample with Randall, probably one of the best teams post Jan 1 for that, you know, two or three stre week stretch. Talk about it, Bobby. We saw a sam sample. And as I said in the article, and I've already seen comments, people saying Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> Wait a minute. The same Donovan Mitchell that did not play the last two games in Cleveland that had his own history of. Mm. healthy that's the direction you want to go okay pausing it right there because you guys know 
One of the players on my list is, of course, Donovan Mitchell. In terms of players, I would like the Knicks to go after. Now, he used to be around number two, almost number one, but he's fallen all the way down to number three now. My number one target for the Knicks right now is Mikel Bridges. After him, it would be Devin Booker, and then it would be Donovan Mitchell. But I can understand where Bobby Marks is coming from here because if you saw Donovan Mitchell, even though he had a great season, magical season, superstar level type of season. He was one of the main reasons they beat the Orlando Magic as well in the playoffs. We have to mention that too. But in the Boston series, when you needed him to play, he couldn't play because he was dealing with injuries. And each and every year, he starts to deal with some type of nagging injury. And that's not a good thing for an explosive guard like him. I'm not saying it's something bad right now, but it is something to watch. And I think that's exactly what Bobby Marks is pointing out here. As I said in the article, and I'm probably a one-man band fighting a fight <laughs> that I will not win. Right. Can we please dispel the notion that New York has to go out and big game hunt this offseason looking for that next disgruntled all-star? I know it's a it's an mm. easy way to look at things, and it's New York. But can we <laughs> please dispel that notion? They do not need to. They have a top five player in Jalen Brunson. He's really, True. really good. Trust me. If, even if people don't think he is, he's really good. He carried them. You have an identity with this roster. Third in defensive efficiency since Jan 1. Uh, ninth in deflections. Top level. For a big city team, grit and grind. I'm sorry to use that, steal that from Memphis. There That's okay. Identity with this roster. You've got solid, solid players, which will only get better. Yep. So please, please, I don't want to hear the Knicks should go out and get Donovan Mitchell if he ever became <laughs> available. Or Trey Young. Or oh, God. Guys. Please, please, please. The guys Trey Young? Available. Now, if Devin Booker became available, I might say, yeah. But why are you going out and gripping up your roster? Do not do that. And I think they won't do that, or they shouldn't. Just wanted to point out there because I was just in shock that he said Trey Young, but he also just mentioned Devin Booker. And if he was available, he would like the Knicks to go after him. And again, that is one of the players on my list with very good reason. Booker on this team, a backcourt with Brunson and Booker, that is game changing. Nobody in the league is stopping that. Nobody. I don't care who you have on defense. No one is stopping that backcourt. But go ahead, Bobby. Talk to him some more. Do it. Don't, don't buy into that false narrative that a lot of people preach with the roster, okay? Your big decisions this offseason is certainly going to be the OG Ananobi $19.9 million player option. He's got to June, yep. um, June 24th, I believe. 24th. It's 24th, Bobby. Let's find this here. Bo, 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 bo. 24th, Bobby. Uh, in newbie, uh, June 24th. He's got a player yep. option. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein. has got early bird rights. Uh, yep. Napoleon Bogdanovic's uh, contract has only $2 million. It's $19 million. Uh, They're picking that up. That will become guaranteed if he's on the roster past June 28th. Okay? The likelihood is that New Orleans will defer that first to... Um, to, uh, to 2025. So New York, congratulations. You will enter the night of the draft with the only playoff team. You have two first-round picks, 24 and 25. You also have... Stop right there. 24 and 25. We have two picks in the upcoming draft. Now, I will be doing another video very, very soon regarding draft night and what the New York Knicks plans are for that night. So be aware and keep an eye out for that video. But going back to what Bobby Marks is saying here, Again, even though we're looking at stars and potentially who could be available, Marks is saying right now the thing to do is focus on who we have, try to get healthy, and also look at the draft. And a lot of fans would actually want the Knicks to draft some players. Now, I don't think the Knicks are going to draft two players, but one solid player, I think they can do that, at least with one of the picks that they have. But I'm actually curious and I have a question for you guys. Please answer it below if you can. What do you think about the Knicks? Do you think they should go star chasing or with Bobby Marks? Do you agree that they shouldn't go big star chasing, but if somebody they covet becomes available, they go after that player. But if nobody they covet becomes available, maybe you make smaller upgrades and you go through the draft and you try to build that way. How would you like the New York Knicks to proceed?
Let me know in the comments. I am really curious to see what you guys have to say about the topic. But let's go ahead and continue with Bobby Marks here. 38, so we will see what direction that goes as far as finding some young talent because your finances are going to go high, high, high. Okay? Yeah, yeah. That's where Ananobi and Randall, uh, Randall and uh, Hartenstein come in. We put the graph up on ESPN.com. Thanks to my 18-year-old son for teaching me um, how to use graphs, graphics. <laughs> Shout out. Name someone to do it. <laughs> $156 million in salary. That includes the Ananobi player option. That includes unlikely bonuses that you have to count towards the apron. Okay. That includes both first-round picks. Your uh, luxury tax is at 171. The apron level is at 178 and change. Second apron is 189. So, okay. if you keep Bogdanovic and you pay um, Isaiah four for 72.5, that's the most he can get, and you bring back Ananobi at a contract north 30 ish, and we'll get into that in a minute, yep. you are a likely second apron team. And you know Oof. what the apron restrictions come with. The inability to send cash into the deal. The yeah. inability to aggregate contracts. The inability to take back more money in a deal. Um, right. It comes with restrictions. And I'm sure Damn. New York is fully aware of that when they did the Ananobi deal back in, um, back in uh, what was that, December 30th? December. I think it was yeah. Spain, man. Um, December. So they knew that it was basically they were going to see the same situation if they kept quickly and paid him, and then you had to keep Hartenstein also. Same, similar situation. All right. So it will get costly. So there are some decisions to make as far as how your depth is going to be impacted, whether it be Alec Burks, who's a free agent, or Precious Achua, who is a restricted free agent, who right. will likely get tendered a qualifying offer. The big decision as far as where you are financially will come with the 35-year-old Boyan Bogdanovic who has $2 million out of $19 million guaranteed and has until June 28th, New York does, to guarantee that contract. Your priorities are certainly Ananobi. I'm already seeing on the timeline people said, don't pay him. Okay. Who said that? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Nobody could say not to pay OG Ananobi. Not pay OG Ananobi? Why? Because he was a little bit injured? Do we forget the record with Ananobi? Don't pay Ananobi with everything we gave up to give away to get Ananobi? That's... What? That doesn't make any sense. Please. Please don't say that. You gotta pay Ananobi, especially at this point. The only question right now is, how much do you pay him? But there's no question that you have to pay him. That's ludicrous. The $13 million uh, non-tax mid-level on um, Joe Smith in free agency. Fake name, not the legend Joe Smith, former <laughs> Maryland. Go ahead, see what your roster looks like there, especially after you traded two, two quality players for him. We I, lo impact I love when he says what I got to say. All right, I said 26 and 5. Knicks were one game below 500 in the regular season with him not on the court. One of the best lockdown defenders in the NBA. The, the analytics, the eye test, all prove it. But what every, everything I just said comes with the but. The but comes in with the durability factor. Has played an average of 50 games over the last four seasons. That is a major, major, major concern as far Yikes. as paying a guy north of 30 million 30 million wow new york has done a terrific job with their salary cap wow no player on the roster earns more than 30 million dollars including jalen brunson that's going to change yeah in a year a year or two and we'll go into that in a minute so you have to figure out what you're comfortable with in an ob is it four for 130 let's say it's, it's not it's not five for two um to let's see, I'm gonna get two four, two forty five. I think. Oh, it ain't five for two forty five. I'm not right I'm not doing that. And he, no he way. Detroit, and they can have him and his lack of durability. Um, Ooh. So you've got to figure. Out All right, we we got to stop it right there. That's a very good point by Bobby Marks. Um, the quality of games that Ananobi plays when he's out there, the level of play when he's out there, I don't think that's questioned. 
He is amazing on the floor when he's available for the Knicks. But there's the problem right there. When available. Like I said, you have to pay Ananobi. You must pay Ananobi. And I think Ananobi's likely going to get somewhere around 30 to 35 million. I believe Ian Bagley, an SNY NBA insider, also suggested that Ananobi was likely going to get 35 million from the Knicks. So if his value is around 30 to 35 million, I can see him getting paid that. And the Knicks have to pay him given everything that they gave up for him. Now, I agree with Marks. You don't overpay him. You don't max him out. That doesn't make any sense. However, if you're the Knicks, you have to take into account what you're paying him, how many games you're going to get out of him, and how you're going to utilize him. And I think Bobby Marks is bringing up a great fact here. If you guys think Ananobi is durable, let me know in the comments below. I don't even know why I asked that question, because I feel like a lot of you guys are going to say, uh, no, of course he's not. Did you not just hear Bobby Marks say he's not durable? I mean, okay, you don't have to answer it then. <laughs> Let's go back to Bobby Marks. Out what the Ananobi number is going to be. Um, likely will probably opt out 19.9. Um, he will get a pay increase. He will get a pay increase. He will probably become the first New York player to earn $30 million or more, which is fine where the economics of the salary cap is growing. Right. You eventually will have to get out of that stigma that everybody has to be below, has to be below $30 million. Mm. Hartenstein is a different uh problem the problem with him is the inability to pay him more than four for 72.5 million dollars he's got early bird rights you are restricted when it's early bird rights he's on the mm. roster for two years so you have a decision to make or he has a decision to make when you look at orlando okc philly utah detroit those are the five teams that have cap space significant cap space i'm not putting san antonio in there because they basically have to clear some room we could put them in there we know the impact that he's had it's been tremendous, okay? I mean, joined AD and Victor as the only players with 85 blocks and 85 steals this season. I mean, we can go on and on about his value. Now, it comes down to, is four for 72.5 enough for him? I think it is. For a center, 16 to $17 million in this day and age, if it's not a mm -hmm. top-line center, um, the disadvantage New York has besides early bird is that this is a poor free agent class. Nick Claxton, Jonas Valanciunas. Those are your two other marquee level free agents here. So we right. will see, and they will be in a holding pattern. The good news is that on the first day after the NBA finals that you can start negotiating with your own free agents. So they'll, be an, they'll have an idea of what the cost is going to be, and they'll have an idea with Ananobi, and that will lead to what happens with Bogdanovic. Okay, that's your offseason priority. Your extension candidates, Jalen Brunson is extension eligible for four for 157. Do I think, think Jalen Brunson will sign that? I don't know. Should he? Probably not. If he wants to maximize his financial window, the best thing is to play out this year, opt out of his contract, and then sign for five for 270 next year. Right. And that's the best. If I was, listen, 150, turning $157 million guaranteed, that's, that's hard to do. But if you want to bet on yourself, Wait until next year to sign a max five for 270. And that's where you see the cost of New York's roster start increasing here. Julius Randle is extension eligible. I would probably not do anything with Randle. Three for 81. That's, I'm not going in that direction. Um, especially coming off shoulder surgery. Not doing yep. it. Sorry. Agreed. You've got Ananobi is extension eligible through June 30th. Jericho Sims, Mitchell Robinson, Burks, Bogdanovic. Burks is gone. Extension eligible. You got to figure out your bench if Bogdanovic and Burks are not brought back. And then we all know about your draft assets. You've got two in the first this year. You got all seven of your own. You've got protected mm -hmm. picks from Detroit, Milwaukee, and the Wizards. Um, and you've got seven seconds available. You're in good, great shape draft equity wise. You're in great shape roster wise. It's just a matter of cost now. Cost yep. as far as keeping this roster together. And please. Please, I know it's the nature of the beast. <laughs> I do not want to hear about New York should go after Donovan Mitchell if he became available. Please, for the sanity of all of us. Have a good night. We will talk soon. Well, there you have it. Shout out to Bobby Marks of ESPN for giving us the following information about the Knicks and their offseason guide. I found it very entertaining, very engaging. I got a lot of useful information from it. And now, after hearing everything I just did, 
I absolutely believe that the New York Knicks are going to make some moves this offseason. Not only resign some players, but they are going to go after a star, just not a superstar or an all-star level player, unless it's a player that they covet. If it's maybe Devin Booker or Mikel Bridges, I think the Knicks will push in as many chips as possible to try to get that player on this team. However, if it's maybe Donovan Mitchell or some of these other players, maybe the Knicks won't pursue them just as hard. And even if they do, they might not try to give up everything to get that player on this team. Because if you're looking at what the Knicks need right now and what they have, more than anything else, we all have said it, if fully healthy, this team could probably go all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. I absolutely believe that. Probably beyond that, maybe to the NBA Finals. If all of that is true, then the Knicks probably want to see what this roster can do when fully healthy. And if they make a couple of notable moves that are the right moves that fit this team and fit this coach, maybe that puts us over the edge and we turn into an NBA Finals team and a contender each and every year for many years. That's been the goal for Leon Rose ever since he stepped foot as president of the New York Knicks. And this year, he started to make moves to get us in that position. And now we are in the prime position to make a major move this offseason. Whether or not we do all depends on who's available, their cost, and if Leon Rose and this Knicks front office believe that player can make this Knicks team go all the way to the NBA Finals. If all those things are checked, then you can best believe that player is going to be a New York Knick because Leon Rose will not stop until he is. But what about you guys? What do you think about Bobby Marks and his offseason guy for the Knicks? Do you agree with him? Do you disagree with him? And what about this video style type? Do you like when we react to these type of videos and break it down as we're reacting to it? Let me know in the comments below, guys, because honestly, I would love to hear from you. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.